Hey peeps, welcome to another video. So today I thought I would show you all the different by hand London Anna dresses that I've made and I'm sitting right next to them, counted them up and I have 19 here. I've also just finished one which is the zombie pinups and there are two more rayon bodices just waiting their trousers for jumpsuits which will bring me up to a grand total of 22. Yeah, I like this pattern, I like it a lot. Um, I I think I discovered it. Um, I was uh, following along with um, Amber from Forever Amber and Superwoman, um, her shoe challenge for the year, that sort of like wear them or lose them kind of thing. And um, Dino, Charlotte from Dino Princess Char and uh, Roisin from Dolly Clackett were also doing the challenge. Um, and they both sew. And I remember seeing some of Roisin's dresses and just thinking, they're pretty cool. And then I had a look into the patterns that she was using and found By Hand London and just fell in love. And the very first one I ever made was actually this uh, one here, which is um, green hop quilting cotton with gold four leaf clovers all over it and um, it's got to start a tag on it because I have it up in the shop as a sample of uh, some of the sort of thing that I do. Um, I remember I made this one with this skirt from the actual pattern, I tried it on and hated it on me um, and so I added the panelled circle skirt um, that I just love on all of my dresses and uh, yeah completely in love with this dress. I did I don't think I made a muslin. I, no, I did make a muslin. I was being really good. And I remember I altered the pattern. I think it was one of the first full bust adjustments I'd ever done. And I just absolutely loved how it turned out. Um, so much so that I now have 22 of these dresses. But um, over four years, you know, that's totally normal, right? Um, I am going to insert clips of myself wearing all these dresses. Um, I hope. The weather is kind of playing up a bit so they may be taken indoors um yeah that's going to be interesting because I actually don't have very much room in this place to swing a cat and I have a cat and she tries swinging as you can probably hear her now she's crying um yeah but hopefully there will be clips inserted of me wearing each of these so you can get an idea of what they look like so next up I've got uh, is the one that I'm wearing and this is the Alexander Henry Bewitched Cotton and I absolutely love it. I have I think five pin-up girl dresses now and they will definitely be more in my future. Um, I made this one two years ago around this time actually while I was out in Saudi and I remember wearing it out for dinner under my abaya on Halloween. I think it was actually a lunch. And um, yes, yeah, so I was wearing this, this it is a short dress as I will insert a clip so you can have a look. I remember wearing this out under my abaya and feeling very, very naughty because obviously Halloween is uh, definitely not something, that, a holiday that is celebrated out there and short skirts are definitely not appreciated. So under my big black sheet, I had my um, naughty Halloween dress on or what I considered a naughty Halloween dress. And um, yeah, that was actually quite a lot of fun. So next up we've got this, um, what is basically a play suit, and I'll insert a clip of me wearing it here. Um, I got this cotton from Minerva Crafts I believe, and um, yeah, I really, really, really love how this turned out, but I haven't worn it since I finished it, because I absolutely hate my legs at the moment, and you can't wear tights with this because the cotton will stick to them. So, um, yeah. My, my short annas tend to be kind of worn in winter and autumn and my longer annas um, are sort of summer dresses. Um, yeah, not sure quite how that works in my brain, but I think I've said that before, like shorter dresses, less fabric in, in winter, more fabric in summer, but that's just how my brain works. Um, so yeah, I haven't worn this yet, but I'm hopeful that I will next year, so we shall see. Okay, next up we have this. Michael Miller poinsettia fabric and I made this for um, book club Christmas dinner two years ago and it was another one of those I fancy a dress for this event I shall make a dress for the event that's happening tomorrow and yeah I got it done in time and I absolutely love this one I yeah I've worn this one lots um, even when it's not the Christmas season because I just absolutely love the colors of it and again it's another short one 
it's got a waistband as all I think yeah every single one of these has it has a waistband it's just something that I prefer on me this was um, another earlier on dress I made this back in February two years ago I think and it's the Alexander Henry soap fabric that I bought back in 2000 and Six, I want to say I've definitely had this fabric in my stash for a very long time um, I remember seeing it on eBay and I think I went crazy and bought like 10 meters of this colorway and the black and white colorway um, just because it was absolutely awesome as you can see here I have made cushions out of the black and white stuff I did make a dress which I have since taken apart and will be trying to refashion into something that fits me now because back then I was tiny and um, yeah I couldn't even get my leg into it this time around so uh, yeah I've taken it apart and hopefully there's enough fabric there because it's a big circle skirt that I can get something new out of it but yes there's uh, that one which um, I do get red a lot when I go out wearing this but that's fine uh, next up there's another seasonal appropriate seasonally appropriate one here this is I think a timeless treasures fabric and it is lined with my mum's thousand count thread sheet so it's so lovely to wear it feels so soft against the skin and I absolutely love this um this dress and usually when I do the short ones I do the kind of boat neckline um but for some reason I decided to go with the v-neckline on this one um which isn't too cleavagey um given some of my dresses uh the grace dress particularly is very boobtastic. Um, so next up is this um, Timeless Treasures Palazzo print in turquoise and uh, if you've been watching my sewing videos from the start you'll recognize this from my March fabric haul and lookbook and um, yeah I absolutely love this I've worn this loads over the spring and it's now coming into the time for tights again so I should be wearing this loads in the autumn. So this is um, I can't remember the name of the fabric designer it's called zombies can't climb trees um and it has a zombie survival guide written on it which is awesome and again i get read a lot when i wear this one out um i made this two years ago for when i was going to the london film and comic convention because i wanted something i wasn't quite ready to start cosplaying then but i also wanted something quite geeky to wear so i thought this one would fit the bill and i've worn it quite a few times um since then it's a really really nice colour and it's not too you get close up that you can really see what the print is but even when that is, I don't mind I like crazy prints you know like as you probably noticed the majority of my stuff is not subtle so yeah oh. next up and again I don't remember the name of this fabric designer um, but this is a all over strawberry print and it is absolutely gorgeous I love wearing this one it's so colorful this one's lined in brem silk and as with most of my dresses I line just the bodice I think I've lined the skirt on two of them which I will show you when I get to it but yeah um another another little short Anna this is the second Anna that I ever made and this is um one that I did and the inspiration was uh, Jungle January. This fabric is from Bark Cloth, um, which is a Hawaiian fabric company. It's come all the way from Hawaii and it's just stunning. I love all the parrots and stuff on it. Uh, this actually started life as a jumpsuit and I loved it, but the fabric was just way too stiff uh, for the way that I wanted the trousers to look. Um, thankfully, the panel's big enough that I could cut the circle skirt pieces out of it. And this is one of the ones that I've lined as well so this one does work over tights um, and I don't have to wear a slip under it which is great although the lining is polyester lining and um, I tried wearing this when it's slightly hotter and oh my god it's uncomfortable so I may take it apart and reline it but who am I kidding that's probably not going to happen so the last short dress I have to show you is this one and it is one of only two little black dresses that I have in my wardrobe no that's a lie I have three and I don't wear it very often and um, there's a number of reasons for that it's um, black gabardine which I got from John Lewis and it is a very drapey gabardine but it's probably completely the wrong fabric to use for that but I found it really difficult to find a 
nice quality black fabric that I wanted to make a dress out of. And when I stumbled across this, I was like, oh yeah, that'd be quite good, but it'd definitely be better suited to maybe just a skirt or um, trousers or something, um, or coats, things like that. And then I also decided to not to line this one, but to use the facing portion of the pattern and then like bias binding on all of the hems and stuff and um, all of the seams on the inside, which looks beautiful. And of course, you know, I couldn't do black. It had to be sort of turquoisey green or something. Um, but yeah, I, um, I, this is the only dress with a facing that I've made and I won't do it again. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Um, I much prefer the way that the lining feels. So yeah, but I have worn this dress once uh, out of the house and uh, I probably will wear it again, but um, yeah, it's not a favourite. Right, next up we have the midis. So, you'll have from seen this one from my 50 random facts about me. It is, I believe, a Timeless Treasures fabric. I got it from Minerva Crafts on eBay. It's lined with brem silk. It's the V bodice V neckline and um, a huge midi length circle skirt. And I absolutely love this dress. Uh, when I was constructing it, I completely fudged the neckline and stretched that out a bit. So I washed it on a hot wash and hot tumble dried it on a really high setting. And it kind of just about lies flat now. But yeah, stay stitching people, stay stitching is your friend. Um, the other thing with these, the longer circle skirts that I make um, means that the, um, front circle pa uh, panel will not fit on 45 inch wide fabric so I end up with these little triangular pieces that I have to piece now for these ones I tried to get fancy and pattern match um, and I kind of did an alright job but in the future ones after that I just you know it was like mm, sod it no one's going to notice in that much fabric so yeah um, I do that with all of my 27 inch no these are 29 inch long skirts um, just because there isn't a wide enough fabric and the, the type of prints that I like. So yeah, that's that one. Next up we have some naked lady dresses. Uh, again, you'll have seen this one before, it's been in a lookbook. Uh, awesome resting bitch, bitch face dress. Um, and then the two semi-naked ladies on the back. And that's another thing I don't generally bother doing with these kind of prints, is pattern matching across the, um, the, the zip. Um, purely because like I'm lazy most of the time I don't quite have enough fabric and I like to put sort of like a lady on each shoulder blade so yeah this one has got a solid waistband because with this one I have used the same fabric for the waistband which you can see there and it ended up with some very strange kind of body parts random floating body parts so I decided from the future I was going to add in a solid waistband because as I've mentioned I love the way that waistbands um, cinch me in and I just thought it would be uh, an interesting feature. So yeah, that's that one. Next in the pile is this one which again I think I've yeah, definitely. I've definitely filmed in this one before. And as I think I mentioned then, this is a straight up copy from um, Dolly Clackett's blog. It, it, it has a circle skirt. Um, oh, I didn't have to piece the front portion of this one because this was a slightly wider fabric. I got hold of this from my local fabric shop. It was £6 a metre. Absolute bargain. Uh, it's lined with brem silk and I clearly only had a lilac zipper, but I think that works quite well can't really see anything and yeah this is very good for educating people as to the fact that Canada and Spain are next to each other because apparently they are. So yeah, love this one. Uh, next on the pile is another naked, semi-naked lady dress and it is the Alexander Henry Sea Sirens. Again, beautiful, solid waistband, totally love that, gathered skirt to use the most make the most economical use of the fabric possible. It also means that I have machined hemmed it with bias binding, which I really like because it gives it that extra stiffness at the bottom, so it gives it a little bit more floof. 
uh, which is totally a technical um, term. And yeah, there's that one. Uh, now this is a By Hand London Anna Bodice and also a By Hand London Flora skirt with, of course, a waistband. Um, I made this with fabric I got from Fabricland in Southampton. Cut it on the cross grain because of the nature of the skirt panels for the flora skirt and did the bodice the same and it is super 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 tight. Um, lined it in cotton lawn. So this is kind of like when I'm fitting into this one this is definitely a skinny dress. Um, yeah, I really like this. I like the high low hem. My dad hates it. He thinks it looks like beetle wings but I don't mind that. I'm quite happy to look like beetle wings. So yes. My spotty, spotty Anna Flora hybrid. And this one. This is another border print that I got from Etsy. And I, it's slightly heavier weight cotton. It's kind of, kind of almost got like a twill like texture to it. Um, and I just played around with the different pieces of the print with this and also decided that I wanted to do box pleats on it and this was my first attempt at box pleats and I really liked how it turned out um, except for the fact that it wasn't floofy enough for me um, so since then I've added the uh, so I, I take the width of fabric that I want and I do box pleats and then I gather behind the box pleats which I will be doing a tutorial of because I have been asked so yes that is coming um, but yeah I really like this one um, it's called the Ugly Bug Ball Dress. I don't name all my dresses, but yeah, just because it's got little beetles and ladybirds on it. So I thought that was cute. Um, yeah, it's lined in a silky polyester lining. So again, it's a little bit uncomfortable to wear. And I recently had to replace the zip on it, which I've done. I should have just replaced the lining at the same time while I was doing it. But you know, like that would have been intelligent. And we knew that's not me. So yes. Ugly bug ball dress, like that one. Got a huge pile of clothes here. Um, um, now, last up for the ones I'm going to show you today, because I'm not going to show you my October makes um, here. I'm going to show you to, them to you in my October lookbook, funnily enough. But um, yeah, so we've got final two dresses, and this one is um, this really pretty rose cotton that I got from a random quilting shop what I found online and it's lined um, with the silky poly lining again and I decided to use bright yellow bias binding on the hem details and then realised that I'd cut the skirt panel so long that I could turn them over twice so they're super super long um, but yeah I really really love this dress it's a uh, Got the thigh high split, which is a bit shakshire, but um, yeah, uh, for a maxi dress, I think that's okay. I remember I made this uh, two summers ago and I wore it for a first date. And back then I wasn't driving and I had to get a taxi from my local village to, from my local village to the local town where I could then catch a bus to the capital of the Isle of Wight. Then I had to catch another bus up to where the ferry went from. I then had to get on a ferry and then had to walk to the pub in Southampton. And that's the most uh, effort I've ever expended to go on in a date. And um, it actually turned out really well. We, we ended up dating for a couple of months afterwards, but yeah, that was um, a lot of effort. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's that's my memories from this dress. I do wear it every now and again, but I kind of feel it's a bit fancy because like, it's too long to wear with flats just. So I really either ought to shorten it and wear it with flats more often or just dig the heels out and wear it with those. So yeah, really like that one. And then finally, very last one, so number 19, um, there's this one, which again is another maxi and it is this beautiful tropical lawn that I got from my sister-in-law for my birthday a couple of years ago and because it was just that side of see-through that it would have been probably a little bit obscene if I didn't wear anything underneath it I lined the entire thing in cotton lawn um, which meant that I went a bit crazy again with the bias binding and um, bound each panel with hot pink bias binding which I really really like 
and the inside of the split with the hot pink bias mining so that when you walk you get a little flash of pink every now and again which I think is very pretty um, yeah uh, there's not much else to say about these dresses now they are just a pattern that I love that I think really suits me um, and is easy to make so yeah hence 22 of them Anyway, I will stop waffling now. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look through um, the different um, designs that I've come up with for the one pattern. Um, obviously, you know, it is, they all look very similar. It's the fabrics that make them different. But as I've mentioned, it is just a, a really lovely pattern to sew with. I find it fits me very well. And it's something that I can do fairly quickly, so it's kind of the perfect thing for selfish sewing for me, given that I have so little time at the moment to actually spend on selfish sewing. So yeah, there's no fitting required, it's just a cut out, so, and done, which is wonderful. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't let yet, please subscribe, and I shall see you again very soon. Bye! by hand Lana 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 and my cat's just decided to start eating she <laughs> you ate me you're being quiet though oh yeah I need to turn that off as well uh yeah <laughs> I'm waffling but that's the point of this video so shut up Sean please give this video Shiana not remotely suitable for a dress. Chi? Yeah? Hello? Why are you turning at me?